Today is November 4th, 2015. Welcome, everyone. I have Makiko with me, and I have Valerie with me. And a couple more people might join during the during the webinar. I think it, thank you for showing your face. Now we we are live. Uh, hey, Valerie. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today we have a, a webinar on DNA, and I intended to be relatively short, not two and a half hours, but mostly like one hour, 20 minutes or something. But I wouldn't rush. If we, if we just run out of time, we might continue later. Just today is, <laughs> I already had one channel in today, and I have things coming. So let's make it sweet and short. Don't rush. Oh, what a tall order. What a rush. Don't rush. We'll do it again. Okay. So, um, I, I would like to do it in semi-channeling state. I will be present, but I will bring my higher self and my collective, we will call it Erru. Erru. Um, and, uh, and then we'll discuss the DNA. One more thing is that we, in, initially it was the webinar on the DNA, O-N. Uh, on DNA, Opera Nancy, O N, but I mistyped and it was Opera Michael, uh, O M DNA, and it's, it sounded so wonderful that I kept it. So we have a Om DNA webinar, and I guess I will have to start with Om, and this Om is a blessing for everybody's DNA. You may join me, although Google Hangouts don't support uh, a chorus, uh, either one microphone or another. It doesn't, it doesn't sound all together, but I will, you, you can join quietly. How is the sound? Very nice. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Very beautiful. Thank you. I hear Gaby joined us. Welcome, Gaby. Uh, everybody, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Much and deep gratitude. Much and deep love. Much and deep appreciation. We are one. We are united. We are helping each other. We synergize. Today we will be speaking about one of the most sacred, most divine, most miraculous structures, divine miraculous symbols, double snake, double helix, the DNA. I bless your connection to the spirit, I bless your connection to the earth, I Bless your connection to the physical, material life. <clears throat> what is the veil? The veil, the border, the mirror, the separation, the window, the veil, the curtain separates the physical body from the spirit. And sometimes it is hard to penetrate and you're looking for this window. Where can I look through this uh, veil to the spirit world, to the alien world, to the God's dimension, to the source energy. Where is that window? And surprise, it is in every cell of yours, in every point of yours. There is a little, little tiny point, and it is a whole universe of the DNA molecule, which is a portal. Every cell of yours is a portal to the spirit. You are connected to this spirit through the portal, and you are connected to your oversoul through this portal as long as your body lives. And when it dies, it shuts down. <laughs> but you return home. Life is endless. You are endless, eternal spirit. I invite questions. We invite questions. Okay. 
I have a question. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So I have a three questions about DNA, which are under different category. Yes. Tell me which one you could dive in, considering imitation of the time. Sure. The first one is infusion. Yes. And I like to understand more. Uh, you, uh, if you could use more high science as well as a more spiritual explanation. Yes. So that's the one. Second category is hybridization, uh, which include Yael. Yes. And then also a human. How we've been hybridized more in a um, high level. That would be great to know. Which yes. Expand in going beyond maybe double to some people have a triple um, DNA strands. Is that go under this hybridization? I like to understand a little bit more about that. Um, understanding some people has a four strands even. So I'd like to hear your explanation of how that, what is the impact and how we, is that the measure of a evolution so called? I'm sorry for interrupting you. Um, I'm starting to get lost. We are starting to get lost. How about you choose where to start? Either all, all of the above is valid, so you pick the most dearest. Start somewhere, and we'll go around your questions. And oh, okay. All right. Then I have my question. The most important question is, a, to me, third category, incarnation and how the DNA is going to hands over from one body to the next when you incarnate. How is the memory and how that part of that DNA being activated or deactivated to maintain the soul integrity as well as the memory from the past? Absolutely easy, easy question. <laughs> That's easy. Okay, there is two two different things two different things. One is genetic inheritance, which goes through physical, through DNA, through physical DNA, from ancestors to every human. Mm -hmm. And the second inheritance is past life inheritance, which goes through the spirit to every human, through the spirit. And uh, these are different things. So there each person has two parents and each of the parents contributes to each of the parents contribute to uh, to the person's DNA usually mm -hmm. equally fifty to fifty percent. Mm -hmm. And this is true in any in every regard either spiritually considering the things or physically or human science or alien science, it's pretty much true. 50% from one parent, 50% from another. If you count grandparents, 25% from one grandparent, 25% of each of great four grandparents. When you go one generation further, it would be one Eight, one generation further, further would be one yes. sixteenth, and yes. so on. We, we definitely is, understand that. Yes. Uh, sorry for uh, continuing. I know you know, but you know we're doing it on records for people who are new to genetics. So. I'm sorry. Uh, so just to describe, if you do the calculation, it appears that about thousand or two thousand years ago. Uh, every two humans on Earth, how, no matter how you take them, had a common ancestor. So everyone is has common uh, about 20 steps, great, great 20 steps, grandmother or grandfather. Just to explain, that is very simple, very straightforward genetic inheritance. Now, with, with the spirit, it is little more sophisticated. The spirit is 
very fluid, very airy, very gaseous, very, uh, very free to choose and realign through the vibration. Uh, in Max's questions to the spirit, he often asks if the spirit has DNA, and the questions come back mixed. In one sense, the spirit do have sort of DNA, but in another sense, this program of the spirit is so much bigger, so much more complex, so much more sophisticated, so much less digital than DNA, that some spirits become offended by that question, saying that it's not for us to judge and not for us to know how the spirit is designed. It's bigger, it's infinite, so it's really hard to measure it. But there is some programming and there is some DNA in the spirit world for sure, some sort of DNA, which is spiritual, different, much more fluid and changeable. Now, when a soul incarnates here, it creates a new version of the soul, new personality, not only on physical level, but new personality on spiritual level as well. This personality is connected through uh, to the past lives, and that is okay, again a experiential, experiential uh, phenomenon, the connection. It's experiential phenomenon. The soul experience has experience connecting to the past lives, and it draws these experiences, draws this knowledge from the past lives through resonances, through resonances, through resonators, resonating to the other past lives, to the other lives. And often people are born with born talents, like knowing how to speak, knowing how to sing, know how to play music, know how to solve problems, know how to cook. Max has born with the knowledge how to sew clothes and the idea of fashions, and that is so dear to Max that he all often considers that he could be a clothes maker. <laughs> <laughs> and that just comes born. Max just, you know, that's a natural a natural thing which came from at least one other past past lives. Past life. So uh, that connection is fluid and uh, past life connection. And uh, um, Sometimes, as you go through your life, you change, your vibration changes, you change your highest excitement, you change your focus of attention. As you change your focus of attention, you change your main vibration somewhat, not fully, but somewhat. In your chord of vibration, you add more new vibrations by choice. And as you vibrate differently, you attract new lives from the past, from the library of lives, from Akashic library of lives, and they become your past lives, which is <laughs> which is uh, just another illustration that the past is not fixed, not in human physical form, but not either not in spiritual form. You just experience new past life, you discover it. And then the more you focus on it, the more confirmations you get that it was you. Now, uh. how does it happen? How does it happen that you can connect? Of course, resonance. A resonance. What is resonance? When two oscillators, oscillator is something that oscillates, vibrates. When two oscillators vibrate and come into connection in their vibration, it's called resonation. They have to start vibrating simultaneously. Simple vibration is simple, but there are complex cores of vibration, so the structures have to be complex and they start resonating. So to resonate with something, with the past life, you have to have common spiritual ancestry. So usually mm -hmm. you would resonate with the past life or with the life which was close on the tree of life it will be related to you in many ways. So, 
in it's not only by free will you connect, not only by choices, but also by spiritual relationship. And again, your highest higher self is the collection, the entity or which had all past life resonating with you, all past lives. It's the, your future self which lived this life and all past and future lives of this entity. Oh, now, how do you um, how do you evoke ancestral memory? That is a little more tricky because here you just discovered that your spiritual program, which is partly yeah. DNA, resonates with your genetic program, which is physical DNA. <laughs> and this resonation is not simple. It is coming through certain mechanisms of multiple layers of connection of your physical body to the spirit, which come through multiple bodies like astral body, emotional body, mental body, etheric body. And usually we refer to it as etheric body, just something just beyond the physical, in the same space, in the same space and time. It is the body and aura and the chakras, all of that is tangible and the energy healing healers, energy healers can see it often, sense it physically often and interact with it. So uh, the spirit, when your DNA is activated, it is a spring and it can vibrate in many ways and it vibrates in certain uh, physical waves, ways and also it creates a portal into nearby uh, non-physical space and time, uh, etheric space, we, let's call it etheric space, which is just beyond the veil, it's a portal beyond the veil and, and this vibration passes farther to the spirit. So when your physical DNA becomes cleared up, structured and becomes harmonious. When it becomes harmonious, it starts to resonate, starts to resonate with certain past lives and that's how you walk your past life memories. But also it can resonate with your physical ancestors and that's how you evoke your, the memories from your physical ancestors. So basically it's resonation because you have the same piece of DNA as you say great-grandmother and this way you can resonate through, through time to that past life mm -hmm. of your physical ancestor. I think I answered briefly about the mechanisms here. Let's jump to the next question, unless you want to clarify okay. something here. Uh, Joe has a question. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Who am I speaking to? Uh, this is uh, Max plus higher self plus friendly spirits. We call it Eru. Oh, um, I'm sorry if you cannot answer my question, but recently I had a trip and I went through a portal and I got transported about a mile from my car and I got abducted and I wondered if you could explain that experience to me because a lot of it I do not remember. If you cannot, that is perfectly okay and we'll answer the next question. Thank you. We focus today on DNA. We'll just say briefly, briefly that even in, in the scenario when you're not sure, you're not sure if it was positive or negative abduction, it's up to you to make it positive. Focus, invent for yourself the best possible scenario you could imagine. Focus on it and look for confirmations for that. Make it positive. And the spirit world is fluid enough, flexible enough. Pray, pray to make it positive. Ask God to make it a positive experience of connection. It And invite more of experiences which are positive and they will magically transform into positive abduction. It will be not abduction but a friendly visit which you asked for. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Makika, your turn. Let's do one turn, Makika, and one turn, someone else. Oh, okay, well, Max asked me to remind you with uh, um, Yael hybridization question. Thank you. Yael, um, 
one of the paradoxes is how is it possible that Yael is closest human ancestor, Earth's human, um, sorry, ancestor, closest race to humans genetically, and doesn't look much like humans. Mm. There are many answers, like Pleiadians look even more human than Yael, but why Yael are closest? And the reason is that First, Yael are very diverse. There are Yael who look exactly like humans, and there are Yael who look very much like tall, gray aliens, and very little like Earth humans. So the first answer is that, the main answer is that many other races who look like humans have common ancestors, but uh, since that old time when they had common ancestors, like thousands of years, they uh, humanity changed and this race has changed, so there is a lot of little mutations, little changes, so they're not as close. And Yael have very recent infusions of pure earthly DNA, and uh, this is why they have big f fragments, big stretches of human genome almost unaltered, and this way they're closest our rel relatives as a race, closest race of our relatives in uh, outside the planet. Um, are and, they and here, on, are just, here on Earth now? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there are some yeah, yeah, which Yale yeah, hybrids which are here and born on Earth, which are not aware that they are Yale hybrids or suspect that they are hybrids. There are some Yael who were born outside of Earth, uh, uh, bring, uh, brought up outside of Earth, and then came here as agents. And usually those cannot stay here for a long time, so they have to uh, just visit as tourists and come back. And m in most cases, they just visit to get experience, not to influence our development. And of course, mm -hmm. there are agents which uh, do uh, political work and uh, financial work, and uh, this is through the agreements, usually through the agreements between uh, corresponding parties, because the IEL have a good developing diplomatic relationship with Earth powers, so these individual cases have to be negotiated. And this usually goes through some sort of exchange and trade. Uh, this agent in, in exchange for this capacity and this service and um, uh, things of that sort and uh, the activity is also uh, somewhat limited and controlled. The other thing which we wanted to say is because Yael have so much long stretches of DNA which are identical between Earth and Yael races, they can resonate very much, and they can hybridize very easily with humans. Period. I see. Thank you. Um, who is well, next? Well, uh, could you maybe Max wanted to you to speak a little bit more about that? What could you tell me why the Earthian should be welcoming, or not should is a bad word, um, will be welcoming Yael on Earth in the future? Why Earth should be welcoming? Yeah, your earthling, like earth human. <laughs> Earthlings, yes. Um, Is it more for the uh, health? We will be enhancing each other's health in the future? Oh, you mean phys physically? Physically, why would... Or well, maybe spiritually you mean we will be more in enlightened? Or what would, what would be the... Um, benefit for human to together with the IL race? Yes, um, ma many answers. <laughs> uh, it's like brothers separated. Uh, there is longing for re reuniting. Second is the Earth is overdue to open the borders and enter the galactic society. And Yael, because their closest relatives have been elected to act as first contact uh, facilitators and open the wider contact. Now they are joined by many other races who are also are eager to help humanity to grow into the galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, third, uh, many Yael ha have relatives on Earth 
very close oh. relatives, recent relatives, and they're just, especially Yael hybrids who have parents on Earth, they are eager to meet their parents. Mm. Of course, Yael follow the Earth events and are nostalgic about Earth's life, Earth's nature, and everything which is connected to human culture. Not everything, but positive things that are connected to human culture. Main thing, absolutely main thing, is a service to the uh, divine, divine providence. And divine providence says that the humanity have to be rescued from suicide. And uh, the, after that, it will serve to rescue of the creative forces of the universe, in, especially in this galaxy. The Earth has great potential because of vitality and because of many good qualities of humans, like compassion and the desire for exploration, desire for creating things and uh, seeding the good in the universe. So we have great potential and uh, the Yahil serves this divine purpose of uh, facilitating us in our moving in positive direction. Of course, everybody is respecting all good friends in the universe, respect our free will and especially our collective free will. So it, they are waiting for the humanity as a whole, as a collective to, to ripe uh, and be, become ready for the contact and expansion beyond the planet. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. So just, uh, I'm sorry. I, can, I hope I'm, I'm not making you tired. I just want to briefly sum up what you said. So Yael is really our soul family, in a sense. And they could act as a diplomat for Earthian, for the good of the expansion of humanity, as well as a galactic brother and sisters that will support the expansion of not spirituality but the creation of it all and also humanity or earth may serve as a good medicine in a sense to provide such as emotional intelligence, spirituality, creation, etc. We are not there yet completely, but perhaps Yael joining us to enlighten us so that we could become a collective free will race, so to say. Oh, uh, yes, in, at large, with two corrections. First, uh, Yael are genetically, physically uh, relatives. Uh, spiritually, they could be relatives to some of the Earthans, and they are relative to some of the Earthans, but these are spiritually could be separate branches because Yael not necessarily are spiritually very close on the tree of life of the spirit of life. Some are close and some are not. Some Yael spirits incarnate right now on Earth. Some of the Earthen spirits incarnate in Yael, but but there are also different branches. So they're not necessarily the same, the same, uh, uh, not, not the whole, as a race, they're not as close spiritually, but they're physically very close. So there is relationship. And the second thing was, it, it, it doesn't imply that Yael and Earth humans become this one race. It because they, they just serve as facilitators and, uh, and not, not merging as one race. That is not on the agenda at all at the moment. And it's not likely to happen soon because with Yael, Yael are the first ones to open the door and with Yael the Earth will be exposed to many other races and it is up to Earth collective and individual groups of people how to, whether to hybridize and how to hybridize with these races. As you mentioned that, as we mentioned that, uh, there is another question of Kim with a warning that out hybridization might be dangerous for the race. Uh, it came from the planet which overly out hybridized itself. So let's define out hybridization. Out hybridization, as we understand it, is 
uh, marrying outside of the tribe, uh, crossing with many other races uncontrollably and unwisely. It could be wise, it could be beneficial, but sometimes it could be too much. And the race could uh, die off just because there is too much infusion. Right now the Earth is largely isolated and the infusions are limited, very limited. They are, they are very limited by many factors including the culture, uh, divine limitations and uh, political limitations and so on. Uh, if humanity decides to allow cross marriages with all races in the universe, <laughs> the warning is that it might die out faster, might die out and dissolve and lose its integrity. And there could be some problems not only on physical level but also on spiritual level. So yes, the danger is there because the Earth at the moment is very strong in etheric energy, very strong in their ability to procreate. The population of Earth grew tremendously in the last couple hundred years, tremendously. It's like multiplied over 20 times. And um, the energy is still huge, the capacity is still huge and the program is largely very healthy. The human physical genome is very healthy and human acidic genome is very healthy. So many races are eager to borrow from this genetic development. So when the Earth faces the opportunity to cross-hybridize with everybody else, that has to be done wisely and not to, to damage both physical and spiritual gen genetics of the earth of the earth say 1% 10% could be healthy but 99% of interhybridization might make things incompatible the vibrations become could become too chaotic to the chords of vibration of the spirit could, could become too incompatible and then the diseases of the spirit and the diseases of the flesh could creep in as it is done with happened with some other races. So that has to be understood by earthly scientists, earthly policy makers, earthly policy makers towards the galaxy and also by uh, our overseers from higher dimensions and ascended masters who should apply their spiritual knowledge to look at the spiritual side of the out hybridization. So some of, some of the infusion would be great and of course freedom of this infusion would be wonderful and necessary but, but this freedom has to uh, follow certain limitations, wise limitations and wise rules to avoid so, the chaos. Um. Max, oh no, it's not Max. I'm sorry. Um, Error and Max, uh, yes. Um, before you go too much, maybe you could educate us on definition or difference between infusion and cross hybridization. Yes, thank you. Um, cross hybridization is very common event on Earth. Say. America is a melting pot of many races. New York, Chicago, or any big city in America are uh, cross-hybridizing very strongly, very fast, especially after the end of segregation, official segregation in schools. When students study in the same classes of different races, uh, they become friends, they, the borders are dissolved and they easily marry each other and cross-hybridize, the races cross-hybridize. And this is, at this stage of the development, is very healthy for every, from every perspective, from cultural, spiritual, physical, genetic perspective. It's very healthy. For many centuries, the races were bred naturally in isolation, divided by borders, but 
in last years, the borders become much more open, and many more people are moving across the borders and across the cultural divisions and cross hybridize cross. I understand. When you cross. may I may I ask there there when you talk about hybridization, is that cross hybridization or there is a narrower definition of hybridization? Oh, the word cross means just uh, how how do you call it? Just the like two roads cross. Yeah, two okay. roads cross. That's okay, it. 15, so 15, hybridization 15. and cross hybridization are about the same word. Hybridization okay. means two things come together and become one hybrid. Cross hybridization. I guess it's usually used when you speak about not two things but about many things. Like when you speak about mm -hmm. hybridizing one animal with another, you make a hybrid like a peach yes. with an apple, it's a hybridization. But when you uh, hybridize the forest of the, put a garden of peaches and garden of apples in the same garden, like mm -hmm. it's cross, many crosses happen. So cross is just uh, usually between the population. So cross hybridization between races and hybridization between individuals. That's the difference between the words. But the essence Thank is you. the same. Now, Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for asking. Now infusion is very different thing. Infusion which is offered as an experiment, early development in uh, Gork Fitnir practice is something which is done only by uh, conscious invitation by consent of a human, where the human is, in, is inviting um, a little bit of genetic material from a friendly alien race, and usually it is consulted which race is donating the material. And this genetic material is placed into a human uh, for the benefits of developing special abilities such as telepathy and other psychic abilities. And this is done usually to the brain, heart, and other important organs, but doesn't actually transfer into their germline, into the sexual uh -huh. uh, organs. So okay. it doesn't inherit. It, 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 it usually is not inherited. It is only for the benefit of this specific individual, mm. and it is done first spiritually. Uh, as a spiritual projection of the future genomic DNA. So it's not very physical, it's more like a program which is there in spirit and then gradually as the process goes it integrates into their physical body as hybrid as hybrid cells, meaning it contain the, the cells are designed to be partly human, partly alien. So these cells basically just enter between other cells and get into the tissue and make home there. They make home there and gradually okay. they kind of penetrate and uh, it's largely controlled process in the beginning and later it's controlled from another dimension, it's trans-dimensional process. But uh, because cells oh, okay. are smart and conscious, there is much yes. of freedom of choice of the individual and of each cell. Each cell decides what to do. The cells Make are sense. smart. Thank you. That's much better. So is this like a more like a stem cell type or? Yes, yes, like it's more like stem cell type. More like a stem cell. So is they going to be... I'm sorry? The cell, just to explain to the listeners, the stem cell is oh. something which uh, can give birth to other cells. You, usually many of the cells are mm, endpoint, they don't go into further producing more cells. Many cells in the body are at terminal stage, they just do their work and don't, don't produce the children. But stem cells are the ones that proliferate and make children. Now about this, the brain and the heart, they are not regenerate so quickly. So I'm just curious, has, how are you going to, um, do you have a mean to accelerate that or do you just uh, adding more of the tissue to augment the existing organ? Uh, 
that information is vague. Uh, again, the spiritual projection, spiritual, etheric projection is created of future cells, and um, the cells, new cells, just materialize from nowhere, just emerge in the body magically, and then uh, they produce the progenitors and uh, gradually uh, take their place, so the brain bec gets more cells, and some, some old cells just die out and new cells uh, take place there, yes. The problem that normal, uh, some of the brain cells don't much reproduce and some of the heart cells don't reproduce much either, but it is overcome easily with technology. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I guess my second question is how that um, the spirituality part, how that's, is that programmed in a DNA or is it some other means? Uh, this would be your, uh, after this question, take a break and invite more questions <laughs> from the audience. Can you repeat the question again? So, so the spirituality part, what about spirituality? Is there a DNA with a genetic code that encodes the spirituality? Oh, is there a genetic code that encodes the spirituality? <laughs> and everybody on their on our side laughs, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there is no genetic code which doesn't encode the spirituality. But when you speak about new age spirituality and um, openness, yes, there is a certain genetic design which say, ends up uh, in, uh, the promotes, um, suggests, uh, what is it, what influences the person better to uh, join the light worker community and become new age spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual in a new age fashion. And there is a certain genetic, uh, there are certain genetic factors which which uh, go the opposite direction, and the person uh, ends oh. up in more of the traditional, conservative, uh, how to say it, more materialistic uh, 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 camp. <laughs> this is a fascination for us because there is no certain prescription. Some of their very advanced hybrids just made their choice and ended up in a materialistic conservative camp and some of the most traditional, most earthly uh, subjects end up in light workers camp. So there is tons of free choice here. We would say that novelty seeking usually allows a person to be brave enough to go and explore. Exploration seeking is again pro Pro new age spirituality. And uh, uh, some people by genetic and spiritual design are paradigm breakers, revolutionaries in a good good sense of this word, uh, explorers, uh, the ones who don't care about uh, the common paradigm, or even more, the ones which uh, always go against the common paradigm. <laughs> <laughs> and this is again by genetic design and also spiritual design. Some souls are just rebellious souls. Some <laughs> souls chose at their incarnation chose the astrological uh, pattern which is rebellious. So yes, of course there are predetermining factors, pre-suggesting um, factors, gentle suggesting factors, but the free choice is always respected and um, the person might have rebellious soul, but still be very responsible and believe that their responsibility is to say stay with a common, loyal, conservative camp. And only when the common consensus conservative camp finally decides to go, then they will go. <laughs> now we invite the question. Yes, that's funny. Now we invite the questions from uh, others. Hi, Max. Hello. I have a question. I hear a familiar voice. This is Valerie. Hey, Valerie. Um, yes, uh, I understand that human DNA is valuable, like extremely valuable, and the other uh, beings would love to get that infusion from us. So, is there another 
race being that has just as valuable a DNA as humans do. Of course, absolutely yes, absolutely yes. Humans are unique in many other ways. There is uh, an idea of divine role for the humanity and a big role for the humanity in the restoration of harmony in the galaxy and also their, just the stage of the human development, the stage of the race development, the stage of so many billions, it's enormous and abnormal. That's why the humanity is so many wonders. And also it's so many wonders because um, it's rarely happens that so many races are mixed and end up in such a closed, closed, um, what's that word, um, island like Earth. Usually by that time the, the the civilization is very open and open for hundreds of years. The fact that Earth remains closed is very unusual. Um, we'll stop here. Thank you for question. Yes. Thank you so much. I also was wondering about the DNA infusions. Mm -hmm. um, how does a person know which DNA infusions are going to help them the most? Um, yeah, this is experimental. There is trial and error. Um, if you are cautious, you might ask for a little bit and see if you notice anything and if you like that. Um, it's an experiment with, to us as well. We don't have too much experience, but we have tens of cases, so we we can predict a little bit and also there is a big factor of you define your reality you define your reality you look at where you are and where you wish to go what you wish to achieve where do you feel is your strength and where you feel you want to improve and you can talk to us and see which of the genes which of the connections uh, might might benefit you. Uh, for Max it was not as much of ch desire of changing his own genetic design and he was in love with his flaws as well. What he wanted was a symbolic connection to specific individuals in the alien races. He wanted their specific DNA to become related to Takur, to become related to this dude. <laughs> just to have brother, grandmother, that sort of thing. I see. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Does anyone else have a question? All right. Makika, it's your turn then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I keep asking for questions from others. You are the you are in, in charge. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So um, there's a, some part of me don't entirely believe in this common ancestors because human were made all of us are made by anarchy. So were. Yes. You know, great, great genetic mani manipulator, master. Yes. And then I do, I do feel that connection to them as well. But I guess all of us do, I assume. Mm -hmm. But what happened before we be manipulated? I understand that we had so many more DNA strands, and we had a more ability to do different things. Are we going back 
to that state, in a sense, to find 12 additional strands, or my information is not entirely correct? Yes, um, yes and no. Let's continue. All right, there are several questions here. Uh, let's highlight the main two ones. First question was, is it really human have alien ancestor and ancestors? And second, uh, the story about multiple strands. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, when we speak about multiple strands, usually it is just simplification and the flow of translation. Oh. The humans always have, in physical world, have double-stranded DNA, period. <laughs> double strand, two strands, two yes. strands making a helix, no more. Yes. The third strand is physically there, well known to the science. It's temporary, and it's not all the way through the chromosome. It's just a little piece here and there, like oh. sneaking in. It's usually RNA, not DNA. It's oh. in, in the hundred percent. It's usually RNA just attaching to the DNA, the third strand, and that's period. No force, no so on. Now, the mm -hmm. etheric body, the closest to their physical, beyond the veil, the etheric body has next two strands, and next layer of etheric body has next two strands, and next layer of etheric body has next two strands, and so on, until you get the whole connection to your oversoul. So, oh. so that connection goes through multiple parallel layers, some of them in this physical space, very close, tangible. When you do Reiki, you heal your strength number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus minus few. And when you, and then it goes out of this space to the level where you can reach only with spirits, but not with Reiki hands, uh, with the spirit. So. Uh, activating those strands means that you grow and the spirit grows together into each other. Your physical body reconnects to the spirits by growing the roots into these closest dimensions, closest layers of the etheric body. Reconnects, re-synchronizes, re-harmonizes. Uh, it becomes coherent. Coherent means harmonic, coherent harmonic, vibrating in resonance. So as you clear up your physical body of toxins and your body contains memories, traumas from this life as chemical toxins, as you, as you clear out the toxins and the memories of the traumas, and you heal the traumas, you forgive, the toxins go out and it's called detoxification, detox. So big part of that is your mental work, which already goes into your, beyond the physical, it goes into the next few levels of layers of etheric body. And you clear up these strands, these layers, and, uh, and you keep going until you re-synchronize, re-harmonize, resonate, re-resonate to your next layers of your bodies and you become one, united, unified, more conscious. It's called, usually in light workers' community, it's called fully conscious or higher conscious, holy conscious. You become whole with your spirit. And then uh, the spirit does the same from their side and they regrow into your physical body. So when you meditate, that's the process of reunion and clearing up, re establishing the resonation, re-establishing the coherence between different bodies and different DNAs. So obviously the uh, higher masters are more connected to their DNA. The Buddhist monks, the highly spiritual people, they are well integrated and you see that they shine because there is so much more life force coming all the way through, up and down. And obviously the aliens from different levels, they have 
just their culture is such that they are way more connected from the very beginning to the very end. They are very connected to their multiple bodies, and they, in the higher dimensions, this is way more transparent. Earth is <laughs> experimentally is very sh unique in a way that it's all blocked by very strong veil. So the veil is the key here. Uh, Max, briefly, um, when we dream, are we activating a certain DNA strands? Or deactivating, right? You can do whatever oh, you like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a nightmare, possibly the, the strands are shutting down. And if you have a wonderful dream, they are activated. Yes. I see. No, no, I understand. So, so thank you. So going back to my question, um, the Aryan ancestor you are trying to explain to me that? Yes, alien ancestors. Yeah. I understand that you create your reality right now <laughs> and you create your past right now. So for some, all right, some humans have no alien ancestors and <laughs> they created that reality and this reality is shaken right now. They discovered, they already watched ancient aliens and they're not sure anymore. But yes, <laughs> some humans still have the past with no alien ancestors and some humans have the past which lasts only less than 6,000 years and starts with Adam. That's it. Alright, now... Uh, but I thought it's a, we are talking about fact and not the belief system. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so there are multiple multiple realities, multiple Oh, I see. Worlds overlaying. You're playing on the same field with people who have different pasts. Some people don't believe that dinosaurs existed at all, or they existed within 6,000 years, right? So for them, it is very real, and it, nothing will can shake their their worldview. Oh, okay. Max. <laughs> so so the present is common. The past <laughs> is a little bit different. But in any case, in the reality where most of my listeners are, how about this? In the reality okay. where our listeners are, uh, the alien presence is very profound. Just look at the pyramids, look at the Peru, the technologies which were used to build these uh, monoliths, uh, to melt and mold the stones, are well, alien clearly alien. Uh, look at the Sitchin's uh, interpretations of Sumerian tablets. Look at the Hindu, million of Hindu people, they know the aliens were there because the sacred texts say such. It's only Christi Christian um, uh, tradition kind of has very little on aliens. It was wiped out. But, but Elohim look like aliens in many ways. Uh, and there are other mentions in the Bible. Um, uh, most of the aliens, many of the alien colonies which were made on Earth were made by refugees. They just ran out from their wars and found the re refuge on Earth. And for some of them it was impossible to live on Earth in natural conditions, so they had to build artificial cities with artificial environment to survive here. But for them to reincarnate, it was essential to adapt to this planet. So they had to create vessels for their souls, which would be compatible with both with their souls and also with compatible with the ecology here. So they created such. And initially they used uh, primate ancestors from Earth, and then as there was a variety of different uh, versions of the human, they experimented with such and created more and more compatible versions. Now, their vibration on Earth was more fourth dimensional, fourth density, before the destruction of Atlantis. And then it went down to the third density at the destruction of Atlantis and with the fall of humanity. It was the biggest catastrophe, catastrophe in their recent history, last 
I'm very sorry. It was about 23 and a half thousand years. Again, it's not the truth for all humanity, truth for my listeners. If you go and look for confirmations, you will find plenty, just plenty. Mm -hmm. So that common history is commonly accepted by enlightened people and uh, and that history possibly will will be taken later by by the whole humankind collectively because it makes sense and it is a nice scenario. So you create the past right now and this past makes a lot of sense. Um, if you, if you, okay. But 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 I do confuse when you talk about soul family, DNA ancestor, you know, uh, or spirit or realm. You know, let's say you want to go home after this life. Yes. How would I know which one is my soul family? <laughs> is your soul family? Yes. You will know. It's easy. Oh, you will know for sure. Um, most of people know no problem through resonation. When you become spirit, it's you're dragged, you're drawn. It's happiness. You just by by the feeling you will reunite with your source in a very happy manner. Uh, <laughs> you won't be confused. No, you're confused only here. Uh, no, no. On the other side, it's so easy. It's it's laughable. Um, but um, you carry the, this life and this genome with you in the spirit world it, and the whole life. It's uh, The spirit is so huge mm -hmm. that the whole life, the whole events, all your genome and the whole thing is packaged on a little floppy drive and you take it in your pocket when you go home. <laughs> <laughs> so on your end, what human should call that? Is it oversoul? Hi yourself, because it's none of things seem to fit. <laughs> yes, um, you remain you. Your higher self rem uh, remains higher self. You and your higher self remains remain free will figures, free will entities. You become uh, related independent spirits. You become part of higher self as higher self becomes part of God. So you remain your identity. You retain your identity. Um, your past lives retain their identities. They are you in many ways, but they have free will and retain their identities. So again, it's uh, enclosed fractals. Enclosed fractals. Okay. Past life becomes part of you. You become the part of past life, but you still have uh, identity and free will. Uh, Oversoul is um, different from higher self in a way that Oversoul is the tree of life and higher self is you, your future self. It's again different identities and yeah. tree of life is more of more, more, more bigger, way bigger, way bigger. And again, the tree of life has lots of branches. So when you say oversoul, there are different levels of oversoul. You can find an oversoul of all humanity. You can find oversoul of your family tree, of your uh, branch, and so on. You can find an oversoul of all humans beyond their uh, earth. You can and and so on. And it goes beyond this reality to bigger reality. So the tree of life is huge. And mm -hmm. again, it's airy and fluid. It is restructuring itself at will. And it goes by resonances. Basically your cord is part of the bigger cord and you resonate with your family tree just because they feel good. You resonate, you attract. By the law of attraction you will be attracted to peop to the souls which resonate with you. It's crazy to find your home because you're drawn there. <laughs> you're drawn. There is a law of attraction. You will be gravitating and flying very fast through the tunnel to <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so beautiful. So it's kind of we are like all free agent in the sense that you're going to see your camp. <laughs> you're going to see your what? Like a camp or a team or whatever, like a football player that you have become free agent and you find your teammate and yes. you rejoin. Yes. It's very flat way too. 
but that's that's how my brain will comprehend at this absolutely <laughs> thank you i i think i'm i ask enough questions anybody else has one please yes yes Max, please yes Max started out uh, pretty tired this morning do you need a drink of water or anything oh thank you <laughs> I had a channeling session um, in the morning with the Russians. Um, we are starting Russian version of human colony already started. Oh, that's wow. awesome. Today was the announcement, the first announcement. Congrats. Thank oh, you. Congrats. Yes, very happy for that. Make it worldwide. Which one should be next? Spanish? Sure. Oh, no, Japan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Makiko, you will be organizing the Japanese version. We'll provide the tools. You just need to make it happen. And the Spanish, I guess Sabrina, Sabrina wanted to do it, so we'll provide that um, uh, technology. And, and Karen, aren't you somewhere else too in another country? Bolivia. She maybe can't hear me. Who? Um, Karen. Karen? Yeah, Karen is in the Netherlands. Netherlands. You European Union, yeah, yes. But European Union speaks English. They do not. They don't have to translate. They all speak English. Yeah, that's true. That's no, true. European Union. You know, we are. We are them. Yes. Okay. Do we have a blessing this morning? Yes. What do you mean? We always have a blessing. Yes, well, you wanted to cut it short, and you've been in about an hour, a little over an hour. Did you oh, want to really? keep going? Or? Oh, thank you. Yeah, let's do a um, burning question. Any more burning questions? <laughs> I do, but I would save it for later. <laughs> okay. Any more burning questions? No, thank you so much. Well, let me look for questions which are burning on this side. Yes, if you have a message um, for us, that would be wonderful. All right, Max will come back fully and show a little bit of uh, chemistry. <laughs> so funny, we need to remind him, huh? <laughs> Short session, he says. <laughs> You are so good. <laughs> it's so funny, whoever that was. <laughs> whoever that was, I love it. Uh, before I forget, um, an announcement. Um, our Reiki, next Reiki class will be Reiki class number two, our level two on... Uh, November 16 at noon uh, Eastern Time, run by me and Jim. Uh, it's only $150, cheaper than you would get elsewhere. And uh, usually we have channeled, part of the class is channeled, and wonderful teachers come through. And people who already took the class felt that the distance is not uh, a barrier for the attunement, initiation, and blessings and things of that sort. They feel the energy, it comes. And obviously, between the classes, we encourage you to go and practice on your family, friends, and uh, so on, and join local Reiki community. And again, because you have two teachers, Jim and me, we have very different, somewhat different, takes on everything, so it's even laughable. On every question, we usually have like two or even more answers. Um, so Reiki 2 class on November 16, and to sign up, um, contact me through Skype, max 2040507, Skype ID, or um, contact Alex, Alex at Reiki at humancolony.org, Reiki at humancolony.org, and uh, sign up for that.
And the payments are flexible. You can pay anywhere, anytime, not necessarily now. You can. Uh, Reiki 2 allows you to become a practitioner, so you can even take the class now, g become a practitioner, earn the money, and send them. That would be fine as well. Ah, oh, good idea. What is it, Max? What? Uh, now, this is. Okay, who is uh, who knows the DNA right now? Who is uh, knowledgeable? Which of the parts of the DNA is that? Oh God, is that A, A or T or C or G? <laughs> very good, very good, very good. All right, so the DNA is very simple code. Every cell contains these four letters A, G, C, T, the molecules, and um, there is in every cell there is three billion of this. Uh, three billion. Uh, letters in the code, uh, every cell, every cell. And in humans, they're almost identical. Every cell has a program. So uh, now the size of your hard drive is about 100 gigabytes or one terabyte. So the three gigabyte code, three billion letters code would, would, would take the space of three gigabyte, which is usually the size of one big video or three smaller videos. So it's it's very manageable, very manageable, and that's you know the whole human physical design in this three gigabytes is programmed. Obviously, there is spiritual design, but the physical one is here in three gigabytes, A G C T, and this strands double stranded. So the code one strand has A G C T, and the second strand is copied from one to another. It's it's cop copied by the principle of uh, Complementarity, A pairs to T, and G pairs to what? G to C. G, C, okay, I guess I have to write. A to T, G to C. That's the principle of complementarity. It's true even for aliens. Uh, all those aliens... They usually have the same AGCT. Some have little more, but usually AGCT. They are very compatible. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to infuse their DNA with us and hybridize. They're all AGCT. Imagine that. And even more, our DNA is a right-handed spiral. It's like a screw. Our screws are right-handed. When you turn it, it goes forward. And our DNA also is right-handed. It goes forward this way. Um, so if you have a picture of left-handed DNA, it's not even alien. It's This DNA is not from Earth for sure. All our life on Earth is right-handed, like that, right-handed. Um, oh, how Mikiko to remember it? question, if she can. All right. Go ahead, Makiko. Sorry. I don't make jump over, but this amino acid encoded by three genetic combination A T Z Z the three uh, three out of four. But um, many of them are redundant and I hear that some other life form could use that combination to produce new kind of amino acid. Is it the case for Aryan? Is some of the Aryan producing different type of amino acid other than the one we have? Um, absolutely yes. The Earth has lots of alien life forms, like, uh, and these life forms are cross cross transferred between different planets. Some of this, some of the alien life forms can live here, and obviously some of the alien life forms cannot live here. But obviously our uh, insects are very different. Our uh, spiders are very different. The Mollusks are very different. Uh, even within our cells, there is mitochondrial DNA, which is very alien to our cells. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we are, are a mixture. And when aliens created, and when angels created, God created us here, the earth, and, or, or, or the life on earth. And when angels and God created the life on earth, they borrowed the designs from everywhere. And as aliens added more, they also borrowed. Uh, the designs from everywhere at will, and you know that's it, it is all evolving together. So yes, mm -hmm. of course there is a lot of alien forms, but 
even with these alien forms, all the DNA is right-handed. And uh, uh, one more thing to, to know is that, you know, there's the dogma of molecular biology, DNA makes RNA, copy to RNA, RNA is translated to the protein. So when you say DNA, it's made out of nucleotides, and also these are called bases, because they have basic properties. Uh, nucleotides contain bases. RNA is made also out of nucleotides, RNA nucleotides, and protein is made out of amino acids, amino acids. Nucleotides, nucleotides, amino acids. Nucleic acid, nucleic acid, protein. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, RNA, ribonucleic acid, protein. Okay? And the last thing is, these are the pairs. Uh, if you have three connections here, white connections, three white connections, it is GC, and G is big, C is small, and this pair has two connections, two connections, it's A, T, A is big, T is small, and surprise, when you overlay A, G, C, and T, they are almost identical, almost identical, there is like very few differences, very tiny differences. So these are the pairs, and they go in a double helix like that. And in one turn of the double helix, there is ten and a half steps, usually, of these pairs. So the helix goes A, G, C, T, A, G, C, T, and they go in pairs. And they kind of connect it together, paired. So that's a simple DNA molecule. And when you think about that, it's, it, it might help to really connect to this physical molecule, which is true shape, and it's universal to our dimension, even the next dimension up there for density. They also have the same physical DNA. Maybe bigger, longer genome, but physically it's almost the same. And I guess at this we might end with a blessing. Anybody is up to the blessings? Do you want to say to say a blessing? Yes. Go ahead. Oh no! I thought you were gonna do. <laughs> to listen. Okay. All right. Yes. Usually Sabrina comes up with a blessing. Guru Dan, do you like to bless us? Okay. All right. He has no audio. Dan doesn't. Okay. All right. We thank you for your questions. We thank you for your interest and especially for your laughter. This laughter was very refreshing. Be in joy, love, and love. Uh, be sure we reconnected to you on one more level just now as we were thinking about the DNA which unites us and you. The DNA is divine. It is magic. It is part of astrology, part of numerology, part of sacred genetics. This idea of the double helix, of yin and yang, of male and female principle of light and dark. This idea penetrates the creation from top to bottom and from bottom to top. Understand that, keep in mind that every level of creation has divine creator within it. Every DNA molecule has the divine force within it, divine intelligence within it. Every cell is intelligent. Every cell is conscious. Every DNA molecule is intelligent. Every DNA molecule is conscious. Every atom is intelligent. Every atom is a new universe. It's limitless. It's eternal. When you meditate, Pray 
for your DNA to become more coherent, more harmonious, purified of darkness, purified of impurities, purified of sadness, purified of drama. Become joyful, that your DNA becomes joyful, becomes ecstatic, become, becomes blissful. Pray for that. Talk to your DNA. Unite with your DNA. All strands in all dimensions. Grow back into your spirit. Reunite with your spirit. And through your spirit, reunite with us. We welcome God within you. And we welcome God within your DNA. We thank you so much, Max. Thank, thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Nice questions and nice laughter. Yes, <laughs> all right. Let's continue some other day. And uh, today, uh, bless you all. And uh, thank you much. I will stop the broadcast right now. Bye, bye, bye. Namaste. Namaste.